So normally, whenever we make appointments, normally we would um, announce that the people who are being willing to be appointed, and then in some cases, you will also want to interview them as well. However, one, I think everybody knows Jerry. Um, I personally, you know, unfortunately, I do not know Cassandra. Uh, however, I can tell you that the board is only a board of one, and the chair is pretty anxious to try to get business done, and she needs a minimum of three to the five-member board. So I think to try to help them, and if the board is okay with this, is I would ask you to appoint both, so that at least that way she could get start to conduct business at the cultural committee. Is there a motion? Make a motion to appoint uh, both people to the Cultural Council. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And approve Kenneth Averro's vacation carryover request. So he's a water department employee as part of your collective bargaining agreement. He's looking to carry over five vacation days. It's per his contract. I've signed off and the superintendent signed off as well. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote to set a date for setting the tax rate. <clears throat> so we always sit at the second uh, meeting in November, which this year would be November 18th. Um, so I've already forwarded a letter over to the Board of Assessors back in September so they can start doing their work and preparing for that meeting. Uh, we normally ask the Board just to take a vote as a matter of just dotting all our I's. So I would ask you to set November 18th at 7 p.m. for the date of setting the tax rate for the town of West Bridgeport. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then that's November 18th. That is correct. Okay. Discuss and vote on annual inspection fees. So at your previous meeting, you recall that on our annual license fees for common VIX, uh, on-premise alcohol in class one, two, and three dealer licenses, uh, we reduced the fees by 25% because they were compelled to be closed for roughly 25% of the year by the state. These are the same enterprises that are in front of you. Every single year, the building department with um, company by the fire chief will inspect their premise to make sure they have exit signs, fire extinguishers, that type of stuff. We normally charge $40 in the same spirit. I'm recommending that we reduce those fees by 25% because it's not a lot of money. It's $40 reduced to 30, so it saves them 10. Again, it's not a lot of money, but I think that it is just the spirit to be able to showcase to them that the board cares and they understand and they're empathetic. The difference in the aggregate to the town is $550, not a lot of money, but again, I think it's the message that we're trying to send and it will be consistent with the vote of last meeting. Motion to approve the reduced 2021 uh, fees. Second, I agree. Uh, I would just <coughs> ask you to make sure that you stipulate 25%, or as presented, your choice. As presented. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 unanimous. Vote to call for sergeant civil service list. So we've had a sergeant budget for both FY20 and FY21 years. We were supposed to do it in the spring, but when COVID hit, you know, a lot of business didn't get done. So at this point, their list is about to expire. So the police chief would like to be able to move forward and act on the current list. So I would ask you to call for, just make a, a, a vote or a motion to call for the sergeant civil services. Is there a motion? Make a motion that um, we call for the su sergeant civil service list. Second. All those in favor? Aye. It's Aye. unanimous. <coughs> Communications and reports from boards, commissions, and town officials. So we have a letter from Superintendent Mark Bodwell. He is inviting the board for a scheduled walk throughout the schools. I spoke with him last Thursday, and he would like to be able to showcase to the three of you how much work they have actually done in the schools to try to keep everybody safe. And of course, that's students, faculty, and anybody else who enters there. So originally, it was envisioned to potentially have the board go over as a group. Personally, I don't think that that's an issue. I don't think it violates the open me law because you're not in deliberation, but I understand there could be some concerns with that. Um, I understand that there is an individual meeting set up with Mary at this point in the following week. And so in that vein, the board can do whatever it would like to do. Um, either set your own schedule, and if so, I'll, I'll facilitate that with, with Superintendent Bodwell. If you'd like to go as a board, we can. 
Um, my personal opinion is we don't have to post for it. It would not be a public meeting. Um, you would just go, but again, it might just be easier um, to go as individuals. So it's really your choice. I'll, I'll just throw it up to all three of you. So um, how about if we, Mary already has her time scheduled? How about if we just try to work out a time either individually or together, Anthony and I, and get back to you? I need to check my schedule. I'll need to I need to check mine as well, and then we'll get back to you. And no, that's fine. So if it's okay, I just want to make sure I'm saying the right thing, then I'll let Mark know you'll stay with your appointment mm -hmm. for the correct Thursday. I know um, it. But, um, but you'll stay with your appointment, mm -hmm. and then I'll let him know. Maybe I'll have the two of you just do it. Congress converse with them directly. You guys can let me know some dates and times. So I'll let them know. Okay. Right? okay. That, sounds that good. sounds good. Okay. Correspondence from the public to determine the course of action. None of that. Public comment period. None of that. Um, dated town administrator's report. So COVID-19 update. Again, uh, we do this every meeting. Just want to let you know, as of today, we have eight new reported cases in town. Four are from the school department with three students and one staff member. Two of those students are from the same family. Um, and so we're at eight. We are a great town. If we could, um, thank you. So you'll see where, where like, oops, sorry. It says east, but it's not east. We're right there in West Bridgewater. We're the only great town that whole entire section. So the town's doing really well. Um, gray means that we have under five cases However, uh, once you increase over five, then it is so many per thousand as to whether or not you go into green, yellow, or red. In my meeting with the Board of Health earlier today, we believe, based on the fact that we only have 7,600 residents, that we can either only be in the gray area or the red. Like, we don't think that we could be in either of the other two. Um, you know, if you just do the math, eight cases per thousand, that would be 0.8 cases per 10,000, and we don't have 10,000 people. So we suspect tomorrow, it used to be the DPH came out Wednesdays at 4 o'clock. I got an email tonight that they're now going to do them on Thursdays. So we suspect tomorrow West Bridgewater will move into another category. I would ask nobody to be alarmed by that. Um, again, um, you know, half of our cases are from one family. So it's not like it's spread throughout the entire town. We've done a really good job. Most of the summer we were at zero. Sometimes one, but mostly at zero. Um, most people, what we've seen out there is people that social distancing and wearing masks if they can't, they are within six feet. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anyone to be alarmed, but I do want to let the board know it is likely that we'll move into the red area effective tomorrow. If that's the case, we are still considered a low risk community because you have to be in the red area for three weeks in a row in order to be considered a high risk, risk community. And based on our historical numbers, I would think that after we move through these eight, that most likely we will not continue to stay in the red. But as we see, there's a lot of red, and um, it is getting colder. People are moving indoors, and people do travel from community to community. So we'll see, but again, I just want to bring it to the board's attention and to the public's attention. I would, nothing to be alarmed at right now, but those are the numbers. Um, one other area I want to bring up under COVID is um, er, uh, earlier in the year, um, Chairman Ray's, you had talked about doing a 40B study. We attempted to get funds at the state level. We were unsuccessful in doing that. We petitioned OCPC, who did give us a grant to write a study. Uh, it's not specific to 40B, but it is about affordable housing and how we could do an affordable housing thing going forward. Because of COVID, they didn't really do any work over the summer. Um, they are still working remote. However, I have been, or the lady's been in touch with me, and they're looking to start moving forward. So I don't know if that's in the next weeks or the next couple of months, but we'll start looking back at that study and we'll get that study done. And that's what I'm looking for now. And again, there was no cost to the town for that. They've not, they've not moved forward at all with actually putting pen to paper and doing the study at all, right? They have not. Just um, next item on my report is electrical aggregation. We're in the middle of a three-year contract. National Grid changes their rates on May 1st and November 1st every single year. Uh, so 30 days prior to whenever the rates change, 
anybody that is new into town, say for example, you moved into town, um, you have never had the opportunity to opt out because you live here. So now if you moved in, those cards will go out. Sure, there's not that many, but each one of you may hear from someone or you may hear indirectly that somebody received a card. It's not a new program, it's the same program. You only get marketed to once, um, and so it'd be for those new people. Again, right now, starting November 1st, as a residential rate, you'll save one cent per kilowatt. Not a ton of money, but if you do a thousand kilowatts a month, so ten dollars, it's hundred and twenty dollars a year. So um, so it gives you an opportunity to save a few dollars. Again, just want to let the board know. Next one is a little bit more concerning. Um, we all know we haven't had a lot of rain. This past week was going to get a little, but we certainly didn't get a lot. And effective on Monday, the Department of uh, DEP has now declared that whole entire orange area, chiefly basically Plymouth County and a little bit northwest, um, as a critical drought area level three. You will see you will see down here is what you should do, a level three critical drought area. So for cities and down, towns, it says ban all outdoor watering, uh, prohibit new landscapes, that type of stuff. So to my knowledge, at least I'm going into my eighth year, I've never seen a town of West Bridgewater have a water ban. Um, so I've sent the information off it to the water department. I'm sure the water department is the one that has the ultimate authority to make whatever decision they're going to make. But this is from DEP. It looks like according to this, that would be one of the areas that they would be looking for the water to, to do. So if you see the signs or you hear about it, this is the reason why it really wasn't a local decision. It was based on the current conditions throughout the entire state. The last, I wanted to end on a high note, because who doesn't like ice cream? Um, so, you know, thanks to the three of you. Um, there's going to be an employee appreciation day in two days. Somebody did a great job. They ordered fantastic weather. It's supposed to be like 70 to 72 and sunny all day. Can't pick a perfect, more perfect day in the middle of October or late October. So, um, the ice cream truck will be here. It's going to be parked out over in front of the fleet center. So, um, you know, we'll all see each other then. And for all of the employees, boards, and committee members that you guys have invited, um, that's where the truck will be. Show up, order an ice cream, chat, have fun. And, um, you know, again, I'll, I'll say it that day and probably say it afterwards, but, you know, thank you to all three of you for doing that. Thank you. That's my report. Anyone have anything else? Yeah? Okay. I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session, not to return to open session, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, specifically Brennan versus Town of West Bridgewater et al. Since, in my opinion, as chair, strategizing in open session would have a detrimental effect on the strategizing position of the town, we will need a roll call vote. Kenny Anders? Anderson, yes. Rays, yes. That is the end of the public meeting. We will now go into executive session.